So I've been doing a lot of beginner style acrylic tutorials lately, and that's actually not what my favorite thing to paint is. I actually really, really, really am deep into oils right now. Loving, loving, loving oils. And uh, wanting to do much more complex paintings than I've been showing in a lot of my tutorials. And I've definitely had a reputation on my channel for doing beginner style tutorials. But I think uh, there's a lot of people who follow me who are much more interested in elevating their their work and they're past the beginner painting acrylic phase. So I'm wanting to share a lot more advanced stuff and what my actual like skill level is of my paintings. I feel like a lot of people find that interesting. I also think it'll push a lot of people to grow if they're looking at my channel for some educational kind of content and looking to figure out how to take their artwork to a level they want to be at. So I'm here sharing an acrylic painting tutorial. I mean, book. see my brain's already so <laughs> stuck on me doing acrylic painting tutorials. Oil painting tutorial. This is an oil painting tutorial and it's not as much a tutorial as it is a walkthrough because um, uh, this is definitely an experimental piece for me because I'm not used to landscapes much at all. And so uh, what I'm gonna do for this is just walk you through all the steps I took for this painting and show you the process. What I did first is I took a piece of MDF board. It's like a eight by 10 ish, I believe. And I did with acrylic paint, a layer of uh, burnt sienna, which is my favorite underpainting color to use. It gives the, my painting a lot of warmth and kind of just has a cohesive feel to the color palette at the end. I loved it. And then I also used that same burnt sienna to start sketching out all of my big elements for my painting. So I used this little photo here as a reference photo. I found it on Pinterest. I couldn't find the original photographer. I usually try and find the photographer, but reverse Google image search didn't give me jack shit. So don't know who this is. If you know, please let me know because I loved this photo and I thought it'd be a great way to push myself with all the super, super details that are in this uh, photo here, especially the leaves. I knew that was gonna be my biggest challenge. So I looked at this reference photo and with my burnt sienna, I started to sketch out every uh, piece of the big elements of this photo here. I took in, I, I try to like, sometimes I try and like squint really hard at a reference photo so I can just, grasp the bare minimum of what the basics are. It kind of blurs everything out and I'm like, okay, so what am I seeing here? I'm seeing the background. I drew in the horizon line, which is on a hill. It's a little bit of a curve. I drew in the tree trunk and the branches. I drew in where that tree line is in the background and where those rocks and that stream is. And then once I had everything kind of sketched out, I went in with a bigger brush, like a big flat brush, and I blocked in my values. So using that burnt sienna, I blocked in the areas that I knew were going to be very, very dark and left the areas lighter that I knew were going to be light, like the sky. And this lets me get a feel for my value placement from the very beginning. So I know that I like the contrast and I like the um, composition. And this is easier in this case because I was copying a reference photo fairly exactly because I was using this as like a study of this photo. Um, but a lot of times this is really nice just so that you can really get a feel for your final composition and value of your piece, if that makes sense. Get a feel for what, what the gist of it's going to look like. So I color blocked in all of that with my burnt sienna so I can make sure that my tree was the most prominent spot. I can have the kind of stripes of different values. And from there, I mixed up as much of my paint as I can. I always kind of tweak my colors as I go along, but I like to mix up my colors first and kind of mess with them as I move along. It just makes my painting process a lot easier if I don't have to mix up each individual color as I'm painting. I kind of like to have a, a base to use and then I can just kind of tweak that around with my colors as I move along. So I mixed up a bunch of colors. I got a couple colors for my sky because I want it to go lighter as it goes down. A variety of greens for me to use, trying to keep that super, super vibrant green, but also some of those shadow greens in there and some dark colors for that trunk. I'm using 
a whole bunch of colors for this. I will list them all on the screen here. I also have a whole bunch of extra colors from other paintings on my palette that I just grab and use also. I, I keep my paints in the freezer, which keeps them from drying out, which is very, very convenient. So I was able to use some of those from old paintings and mix up all different kinds of shades of green for this piece. Once all my colors were mixed up, I wanted to block in my painting with just the basics, kind of the like general color of each shape. I tend to, when I'm painting, paint shapes of color rather than actual objects. So I went in and started with my sky color, a little bit darker at the top and then going down to a slightly, slightly lighter color and blocking that in, leaving some space for the leaves that I know I'm gonna, are gonna sit there. And once that's blocked in, you can see me kind of experimenting with whether or not I wanted to block in the branches first or the leaves. I knew that these leaves were gonna be the biggest challenge for me for this piece. So I was kind of intimidated. I knew I wanted to get this started and get this going, but the leaves were so, so detailed. I got overwhelmed pretty fast. So I decided to just kind of blob in some color. <laughs> I just kind of, I slapped it around a little bit in the general areas where I knew the leaves clumped up and I knew I was gonna go back in with a lot more detail. I was gonna bring more sky colors back in to have the light shining through, but I just wanted some color there for me to work on top of when I came back. <laughs> So then I started moving on from those big clumps of leaves in the sky over to the tree where I blocked in. I went a little more detailed on the colors here, but I didn't need to. I tried to just block in the basic colors. I have some green highlights on the side, darker on the areas that are being shadowed by the canopy of the leaves. And then I blocked in the background tree line, making sure that I kept those colors with a lot more blue tinted in them. Because they're in the distance, I wanted to show that by having them have a little more blue in there and that gives a little bit of an atmospheric effect. It pushes those to the background and gives them some distance. I just, it's really simple. I used a light greenish blue and then a dark greenish blue to block in the shadows and that's all I did. Because it's in the distance too, it didn't need too much detail but I'm also just trying to keep it simple before going in with all that detail. This is just blocking and I'm not worried about drawing individual leaves and, and uh, grass things, grass leaves, grass, grass? <laughs> what do you call an individual piece of grass? Blade, grass blade. I block in the grass in the background and where the light, the dappled light is coming in through the leaves and then the, where the shadows are, where the leaves are creating shadows on the ground, I added that dark green and just basic big clumps. I know that I'm gonna come in with details later. This is not a perfect thing. I'm just kind of clumping the big shapes together. I do the other side, which is mostly in shadow except for a couple spots. I've got a little rock in there that I wanna block in. And then and I have this really pretty focal point of this little tiny baby creek that's running through the center that's has some light hitting it and it's shadowed in other places and it's got these rocks in between. I thought this was super, super beautiful and it was something that really drew me into this image. And this image makes me want to like go and sit under that tree and just listen to a little stream roll by. So I wanted to take my time on there and block in I, where some of the shadows were for those rocks that I knew were going to be scattered all along there. And once that was done, I tried to cover up as much of the burnt sienna as I could, making sure everything was blocked in until I felt like I had the gist of this painting done. Once the basics, total basics are done, it's actually, it's a pretty satisfying point to have all of your colors blocked in because you get a feel for what your painting is going to eventually end up like. The, the blocking in phase is the scariest phase for me. It feels the most intimidating. And once that's done, and all I have to do is add details on top, I'm in a much more comfortable zone. So once this was done, I was feeling really good, but I knew that I was gonna go half, I knew that I was gonna go 
back to those leaves. I was gonna have to go back to those leaves and I was definitely a little nervous about it because they're so detailed. So I definitely spent the most time on this next step. I tried to use a really tiny brush to tap in individual leaves for a while with a dark green, not worrying about any highlights to start. Trying to get a feel for where the leaves are grouped together and I didn't want to make them look like they're just like evenly spread apart, which I was starting to feel like my leaves were like looking like they were exactly like an inch away from each other, which I was not loving. So I tried to make them a little more clumpy and then once I had kind of started to like the groups of leaves better, I went back in with that same small brush and my sky color and I started to tap in little dots, like tiny little organic shapes into the big clumps of the leaves that are mostly like just a single block of green to show that there's space in between those leaves and light from the sky is coming through. And that definitely made me a lot happier and a lot more confident with where this section of the painting was going. It took a lot of work and a lot of troubleshooting and a lot of like moving paint around and uh, taking risks and feeling like I was doing the wrong thing <laughs> for a long time. But eventually, and I, I, I have to admit that I'm still not fully satisfied with these leaves, but this is, a, this is the first time I've ever really seriously went for a ton of detail in the leaves of a tree in a painting like this. So I don't wanna beat myself up too hard about it. And I am fairly happy with the end result but it definitely was rough on me. And I think I went back multiple times as I continued to look at those leaves, but I'd moved on to other parts of the painting and just kind of rework little things as I went along. Um, but I added in some highlights in that area and I was really liking how those leaves were looking for the moment. And I was like, time to move on. So then I went to the details on my tree trunk, which was a lot more fun and a lot more satisfying. I definitely was way more comfortable in the painting of this trunk of this tree. I was really loving the green reflective light that was coming off the grass and hitting the tree. So I definitely had that come in. And then the shadows of the texture of the bark. I used a really, really dark colored mixed up that was like, I think it was like an ultramarine and Indian yellow and probably a little bit of my red to get this really dark, muddy, slightly greeny tinted color and that dark color that looks like almost black was able to help me create that barky texture by streaking that down in my tree I was really satisfied with how that turned out I worked on that trunk for a while making sure I really got all of that reflected light honed in because that's my favorite part of this tree you can see me continuing to go back to the leaves <laughs> I start working on the leaves on the right side of the tree too which is, was a lot easier because they were a lot more concentrated. So I felt more comfortable because it felt much more grouped as opposed to the individualized leaves on the left side of the tree. And after that, working in that background area that there's another tiny tree that's behind the big main tree. After I'd gotten that really dialed in, I was able to start working on the actual grass, the actual surface that the tree is sitting on, especially in the background. I didn't want to put in too much detail. Oh, did I work on, did I not record? Hold on. Oh, I guess your girl did not, she forgot to record painting. In. <laughs> she forgot to record painting in the um, background uh, tree line, but that was pretty simple. So what I did for the background tree line, very simple, I just honestly took a light bluey green color and defined out the tops of some of those trees in the distance to make these little lumpy gumdroppy kind of shapes. Super simple, I really didn't go for very much detail there. So it that if I was gonna miss recording any part, that's an easy part to accidentally forget to record. Anyway, back to the grass, back to the grass. The grass, I wanted to make sure that in the distance, I didn't add too much detail. And I wanted to make sure I got those 
vibrant highlights that are coming through the leaves, the like light that's coming through the leaves and hitting the grass. That was like a very, very special part of this reference photo and I wanted to make sure that stood out really beautifully. So I started defining the shadows a little bit with a darker vibrant green and then getting a super light, almost like it was exclusively white, yellow, and a little bit of green for that really, really, really highlighted green color. And then I was able to go in with a little more detail in the shadowed area and that's where the big time details were gonna start to happen because that's the thing that's closest to us, those grasses in the front and that rock in the front, that's where we're gonna see the most grassy detail. So I wanted to add in uh, some darker shadows so that I can then lay highlighted grass blades on top. And now I was starting to work on my actual little stream, my little creek that was running through, making sure I got some of that dappled light on the, like there's a tiny little beach or like a muddy spot that's by the trunk of the tree on the right side of the painting that has a bunch of rocks on it. And I made sure to get a bunch of highlights over there on those rocks because of the light shining through. And then I started to define more of the shadows of the rocks. There was a bunch of rocks in the creek and it was a little bit overwhelming because of the detail. But what I tried to do is really grasp the shadowed areas of those rocks. And I knew it can just like put on a highlight once the shadows were outlined. And approaching it in that way by painting in the shadow of the rocks first before going in with any of the highlight, that really helped me be able to compartmentalize the rocks themselves and draw them individually. At this point too, I'm I'm hopping around between lots of things. I'm I'm going in with a detail brush and I'm drawing in some grass blades into the front of the painting. I'm doing little areas of the water, lots of shadows. This is the point in my painting where I'm kind of hopping back and forth. I'm seeing what I want to work on and what I want to change and what I want to push. And I'm just kind of going for it, whatever I'm feeling in that moment. And that's too, this is like the part of the painting that feels really meditative for me. Once the like super hard work of the ground the ground level, the basics, the structure is finished. These detail parts are just so mellow and meditative and enjoyable and fun and so, so satisfying. So I honestly, in this moment, I'm just like big time in my groove, adding in all these little details. You can see me drawing in tiny little highlighted grass blades and I paint in that rock that I love. I love how that big boulder in the front turned out. I'm so happy with those colors. It's actually, that rock and a couple rocks in the front are kind of in the reference photo, but like not really. I kind of used my imagination to build them up a little bit more into the look that I actually wanted them to be for this painting. So they can be a little more of a focal point. Um, they were kind of just like thrown in in the reference photo because nature just put them there. Nature didn't intentionally put them in there for my composition. So I decided to change it up a little bit. And I was so, man, I'm in love with that rock. And this is the point too where like, I start to question whether I'm done with the painting or not <laughs> as I work and work and work. And I'm like, when am I done? I know that I, I wanted to put in some little tiny baby flowers once I'd gotten all the grass in. You can see me putting in the grass with different layers of green. I do dark greens and then I layer lighter greens on top in the areas that I want light to be hitting. I'm adding more details to that creek there in the front. I'm adding some highlights with the like a lighter color for some sparkly kind of looks in the water. I'm making sure that every form is the way I want it to. I'm adding, as I get to the end, I want more highlights in between the shadow on the ground of the leaves and where the leaves, where the light is coming through, all kinds of little stuff. And then finally I start to add in tiny, tiny little vibrant highlights and tiny, tiny little flowers to really finish up this painting. And then once that's done, I did, my phone died, unfortunately, right at the end of my painting. But once those flowers are in, I got the beginning of it. I put in a couple more little flowers and then that was my finished painting with oils. I was really, really happy how this turned out. I definitely 
It was a push for me, as a lot of paintings are. I always feel like finishing a painting is a push and I'm always really proud of myself for finishing it. But this one in particular, even though there's a lot that I know needs work on it, I am really pretty stoked on this final version, especially the bottom half of the painting. The bottom half of the painting in itself, I'm just in love with. The top half, you know, that's where <laughs> that's where my skill level needs improvement. That's where I have had the least experience with painting too. So, but trees are a subject that mean a lot to me and I find a lot of meaning in and comfort and I wanna bring them into my art more. So this is a really big step for me and it turned out pretty beautiful. And it, it opened the door for me for much, much, much wider of a variety of landscape paintings. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going on with subject matters like this, dispersed in between my easy stuff like <laughs> water and clouds and things that I find much easier than tree leaves. But this was a pretty difficult and fun one to finish. So if you're interested in every single little detail other than that little part that I missed that I forgot to record. The full length version of this tutorial is gonna be on my Patreon. Every little brushstroke that I recorded is gonna be up there. It's many hours. So all my patrons are gonna be able to, or all my canvas level and above patrons are gonna be able to watch that whole thing, see every little brushstroke I made. It also super, super helps me continue to paint and run my little art business by supporting me on Patreon too. So that's just, a wonderful thing if that's something you'd like to do thank you very much and uh, i've got more oil painting tutorials coming in the future i'd love to know what you want to see me do and i will see you in the next video